Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about the rack attached swing away hitch mechanism. What this is, it's an attachment that goes into your two inch hitch receiver and allows you to basically take anything you've got on the back like a cargo carrier or a bike rack and then just swing it out of the way so that you can have access to the rear of your vehicle. So uh, we're going to go ahead and unbox the system, assemble it, and then talk about how it works and give you my thoughts and reviews about this. We've used it now for about a year and I think I've got some good experience with it and I'd like to share that with you. So if this sounds like fun, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let me show you the problem first. So this is a hitch mounted cargo and bike carrier that I built. I've got two bikes loaded up, ready to go. And let's say I need to get into the back of the vehicle to pull something in or out. So let's go ahead, open the door, la di da, and uh oh, crud. This is as far as I can open the door, right? Because the door is now gonna interfere with whatever you've got stored on your bike or cargo carrier. So you can see this is effectively useless. It's super awkward. I can't, I can't reach in there. There's only eight inches of space so this is a problem we need to get this out of the way um, another issue that you might encounter is uh, I've got this ladder here and that's how I access items on the roof let's say I want to throw another bike up on the roof well how am I even gonna get to this ladder you can see it's incredibly awkward I mean it's feasible you can do it but it's it's not a fun time right so long story short what we need is we need some way to basically get all of this junk out of the way so I can get access to the door and I get access to the ladder but I don't want to take away and have to unload all of the equipment that I've got uh, on the cargo carrier so that's where the rack attach comes in all right, so the first thing to do is let's get it out of this box. Well, it came in literally, this is probably the most boring box in the world. There's no decals anywhere, so that makes it easy to unbox it. So let's just go and pop this guy open and see what's inside. Um, maybe I'll also mention this thing was not light. <laughs> I think this whole box was uh, like 73 pounds, I think. I'll weigh the actual rack attach once I get it out of the box and we'll see how much it actually weighs. But yeah, like I said, the shipping weight was about 73 pounds. But, wow, that was pretty darn easy. Look at that. <laughs> you cut those three uh, straps, these three plastic straps, get them out of the way. And looks like we just got a bunch of cardboard here, and that just pops right off. So let's get him out of the way. And look at this. <laughs> this is pretty nice. It's actually very minimalist. You got the main unit here, and then looks like you got a box here that I imagine is probably full of hardware. Let's go ahead and slice him open and see what's inside. Um, okay. And yeah, look at that. There is really not a whole lot in here. Let's see what we, we get inside this little box. Oh, here's another little box. Oh, I guess I need that X-Acto knife again. Let's go ahead and see what's inside the tiny small box. It says, let's see, this item says it is a hitch stabilizer and tightener. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, so this must be the hitch tightener slash Stabilizer, I guess we'll see what that does a little bit later. Oh, actually, look at that. Great. It even has little instructions in here on what this little guy does. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and install that in a little bit. I'll set this off to the side. Okay, so we've got that straightener. What else is in this box of fun? Oh, I believe this is the new style magnetic safety uh, pin. So that'll be fun to play with later. We've got, oh, here we go. This is the nicer, I believe, the newer, lower profile handle. Some of the, the older rack attaches that I've seen have this red handle sticking straight up, which might cause interference with the door, but I guess we'll see how this works with my van in a little bit. Uh, again, it looks like a little bit of assembly required because you've got all these components here. Uh, you got the pin and the, the main hitch pin with the cotter pin there, and then, great, you got a parts list. That looks pretty nice. Some instructions. Yeah, so this looks pretty reasonable. Okay, so let's set all this off to the side and then let's pull the main unit out and see what it looks like. Okay, so the main unit... Oh, actually, I, sorry, I, I realize you probably can't see all this. Let's move this up a little bit more so you can all get in the camera picture. Okay, and now here's the main unit. Oh, and a piece of paper. Okay, this is my shipping label. Here, so yeah, overall, let's see here. Yeah, this was about, yeah, $359 for the large, for the unit. And then sales tax was about $34. And then shipping, luckily, for this giant 63-pound thing was actually only $18. So that's pretty reasonable. So a little over $400 for the whole setup. 
So let's pull it out. So again, this one is the large. So they sell it in three different sizes, a small, medium, large. And since I've got a bigger van, I got the large version. So let's go ahead and pull him out. Okay, here we go. This is the large. There we are. Okay, it's all taped up. So there you go. That's everything I think that comes in the box. So that was a pretty relatively simple unboxing. So it looks like there is a tiny little bit of assembly required in the sense that we're gonna have to mount the uh, this um, arm here. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, so let's get this into the hitch. So the first thing before I do that, I wanted to show you something. So this is the portion of the rack attached that's gonna go into your two inch hitch. Now notice there's actually two holes. So depending on how far you want the rack attached to stick out past the back of your vehicle, you can use either one of these holes. So I wanna to want to have this as close to the vehicle as possible. So I'm going to use and insert it all the way into this hole here. So just rock it over, drop it into your two inch receiver. And then again, you can push it back. And then you can go ahead and use the provided 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and cotter pin to secure it into your receiver. All right, so next in the assembly process is we're gonna go take our magnetic locking pin. So if you notice, this is actually kind of an interesting design. I don't know, it's probably hard for the camera to focus in on this, but this pin here is actually magnetic. It's got a little magnet there. So if you take them and just drop them in, there it is, there. Oh, that's actually pretty, yeah. That's nice and stuck in there. So now, yep, it's nice and secure. We can think about trying to put on the handle now. All right, so now it's time to get the clamp onto the edge of the rack attached. So luckily they actually supply for you. They give you this, uh, they're actually nice. They give you a 3 Allen and they give you all the hardware. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this clamp using all of the supplied hardware. All right, so the clamp is installed. Now we just gotta install the hook, which is the exact same procedure. Basically it's gotta just go down here. And again, we'll use all the supplied hardware. All right, so the clamp and the hook are now installed. And one thing to note here is that when we attempt to use this, look at this, this doesn't work at all. <laughs> That's because at the factory, this is installed very, very loosely. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to adjust these. You can see there's two nylon nuts at the top and then you've got uh, nuts down here. So this can move this entire assembly up or down. So we're just gonna have to grab a half inch uh, ratchet here for the top and a 9 16 for this bolt down here and basically just pull this thing up until there is good sufficient force holding the two together. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so we adjusted the tension and the position on this bar. So now when we put the clamp into the hook, you pull it and yep, it over centers nicely and you can see it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. So this seems great. All right, on to the next step. So I want to show you something real quick. If you look at the rack attached from the rear of the vehicle, you can kind of see that the way it sits right now, it's not exactly square with the rest of the vehicle. In fact, if I come over here on this side, there's actually a fair bit of a uh, wobble and vibration and play between the rack attached and the vehicle. So we're gonna try to fix that right now. So if you remember, that's where this uh, hitch stabilizer slash tightener is gonna come into play. So let's go ahead and see if we can install that. All right, so I've swung the hitch out of the way so we have better access to where we need to be in order to install this anti-rattle hitch tightening device, um, which really is just a piece of metal that's gonna fit right down here. One thing I will mention real quick is I actually did have to pull the entire hitch out. So remember earlier I said I wanted to put this rack attached as close to the vehicle as possible, so I used that second hole. Well, now I'm really glad this thing comes with two holes so you can adjust the distance because in this case, I need that extra distance because when you see, when I mount this, and drop the U-bolt in like such. If this hitch was installed, uh, was another two inches closer to the vehicle, there wouldn't be enough tolerance and enough gap here. But since it's adjustable, this works great for me. All right, so all I'm gonna do is again, drop the U-bolt in. Now all I need to do is grab ourselves one of these supplied flat washers, one of the supplied lock washers, and one of the supplied half inch 13 nuts. Just screw it on. 
I'll do the same on the other side and tighten this down and we'll go, we'll see how this works. All right, so as you can see with that anti-rattle system in there, it seems to be uh, a little bit better and the wiggle is much improved. Look at this. It's not going anywhere, so that's that's beautiful. It's also kind of a plus or minus. I'm kind of, the jury's still out on this. I don't know what to really think in the sense that this has basically made it so the rack attach is permanently attached to the vehicle. So that's obviously good for, for theft protection here, but now, there's no way you're going to get this rack attach off unless you remove that. So you do need to go get that three quarter inch uh, wrench to remove it. So it makes it a little less portable, but it definitely does the job of not uh, allowing this to vibrate. All right, so let's test it out now that it's all installed. So let's go ahead and open the door and see how much clearance we have. Particularly, let's first open the passenger and look at the clearance between the handle or the clamp and look at that. Oh boy. That is beautiful. That's like three quarters of an inch. There's not a lot of clearance, but there is clearance. So this new low profile handle is definitely the way to go because look at that. I can open that door. Absolutely no problem with that in the way. And again, it looks like they redesigned this safety pin. Some of the older rack attaches had this bigger sort of red clamp that you would grab and pull up and down. Now with this magnetic one, let's again, let's open the driver door fan door and see how much clearance we've got. And again, look at that. It is not a lot. It's like an inch or so of clearance, but there is clearance. So look at this, no interference. This is beautiful. So check that out. I can get the van doors open with no problem with the rack attached. So I don't think there'd be any problem leaving this thing permanently installed on the back of the vehicle. Albeit the only issue I think we're gonna run into is <laughs> uh, my vehicle's got some backup sensors. So I think it's gonna freak out when it sees this rack attached sitting here, but I think that's a small price to pay. So Oh, tell you what, let's go ahead and throw on a cargo carrier and see how that looks with the rack attach. All right, so we saw earlier that it was easy to eliminate the relative motion between the rack attach and the main vehicle by using this plate and U-bolt style anti-rattle mechanism. And now, since we've got rattle or slot between the bike rack and the rack attach, as you can kind of see here, you can kind of see them moving you might naturally think, oh, let's just get another one of these. And in fact, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, all right, just buy another U-bolt and plate anti-rattle mechanism to fix this motion. The problem is, if we drop this bolt down, you'll now see that the design of the rack attach is such that there's, uh, I, I can't do it, right? <laughs> this bar is blocking the plate from being installed. There's no configuration where I can make this work. And again, that's just due to the design of the rack attach, right? Right? The whole idea is this thing is supposed to be able to swing away, so they need some thing underneath to support it. I guess one slightly better design would be if they were to just to chop off an inch or so of this, then this would have worked. But as such, there's an easier solution. Instead of using this type of anti-rattle mechanism, we're now forced to use a different type of system. So this one works very simply. The way to do this is I actually have to take this off first. So we're gonna replace the normal 5 8 inch main pin with one that is supplied All in right, this so kit. So I've gone ahead and thrown on my Hallmaster cargo carrier that I think I showed you in a previous video. It's obviously in the folded up configuration right now. But uh, you know what, here, let's, let's pull it down and get a look at how this thing looks and operates with the rack attached. So I'll get the cargo carrier down and locked. And maybe, again, this might be a nice time to check clearances. So again, we know it clears the rack attach, but again, look at this, this is great. It clears the cargo carrier with, uh, you know, a few inches to spare on both sides. So again, this is beautiful so far. This is awesome, everything clears. But again, as you can probably imagine, if this was loaded up with bikes or whatnot, and I'll show you that a little bit later, uh, you're not gonna be able to open the van doors all the way. So this is why the rack attach is helpful. So let's go give it a try. So I'm gonna pull out the safety pin, then drop the clamp. And now all we gotta do is just basically push this thing out. There we go. Swing, 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 swing. And now when it's all the way swung out, we'll go ahead and drop the safety pin in. There you have it. So if you had a bunch of junk there, uh, this should be no problem. Let's go ahead and check how this door opens. Oh, and look at that, that's like exactly perfect. So if you had junk here, you could still open this driver door completely.
And again, maybe while we're sitting here, this is another good point to, uh, to mention out. Notice that this rack attach, I actually got it and I ordered it so it swings out to the driver door. This is one of the few racks that I was able to discover online that actually allow you to choose which side you want it to swing on. So I wanted to swing on the driver's side because I'm going to plan to have an awning and other items that I want to be able to cover uh, on the passenger side. So I didn't want this thing in the way. So having this being able to swing out to the driver's side was one of the, one of the huge driving factors for why I wanted to go with this rack. So everything looks like it checks out pretty well. Why don't we go ahead and throw some stuff and some equipment on this and we'll get a feel for how this looks. All right, so I've got it loaded up with two bikes and some gears so let me show you uh the clearances i mean they're tight but it works so let me drop the pin pull out the safety i'll just swing this oops swing that out I'll put the safety pin in so we're nice and latched in and now check it out now we have no problem opening this first door in fact you know i can open this all the way no issues and now let's take a look at the second door this is close. <laughs> in fact, watch this. I'll go very slowly and then uh, put it in click right there. And it holds. It holds, but it's just barely touching the bike. Let me show you, actually. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you a little bit closer view of this. Um, this is very, very tight. <laughs> so as you can kind of see, that second door, it will open, but it touches the bike. And in fact, I usually have to put a bike with smaller handlebars. So for example, this is my, um, my road bike with a uh, arrow bar in the front you can imagine if I switched it if I had put the full suspension bike or the mountain bike closer to the door the the wider handlebars would make it so I couldn't open this door all the way but long story short this works perfectly it barely fits but as you can see this is exactly why you want the rack attach system because now look at this you can swing it open you can get complete access to the back everything opens up and holds on very nicely in this configuration the one thing that maybe isn't the 100 percent entirely best um is let's look at here the ground clearance i don't know if you can see this very easily but uh you know there's not a ton of vertical distance between the rack attach and the uh the ground in fact let me show you if you were to go up a small bump you might actually hit this so for example coming out of my driveway i've got this very small hill i have to climb this is enough of an incline that when the front of the van starts to climb it it will make the rear of the van pitch down enough that the rack attach will actually scrape the gravel back here ever so slightly. All right, and while we're talking about dimensions, uh, let me show you that something that I thought was a little bit funny. Um, if you go to rackattach.com, namely the Rackattach website, and you look at this, you see a <laughs> they show an older version of the rack attach. Again, it's got this uh, different safety mechanism and this handle which sticks way up, and they only give very generic dimensions of this, so nothing that would help you if you wanted to really fit this to your vehicle. So instead, what you're going to have to do is go to oneupusa.com and search for rack attach and this is where i bought mine and they've got the updated version of it as you can kind of see here it's got the different handle um and if you come down here and you click on i think i don't know why they call it fitment but anyway if you come here and, to, and click on rack attach fitment it'll bring up um, a PDF which shows the different dimensions. So again, here's the large one which swings off to the passenger side. Again, this, uh, I got mine which swings to the driver's side, so some of these are just uh, mirror images. But anyway, this has a reasonable amount of dimensions, although <laughs> I find it kind of funny that they don't give the dimension, it seems like, between from this center hole to, to the center of this hole to basically show you how far this will extend um, uh, horizontally on your vehicle. So anyway... This is a good resource to find um, dimensions for the rack attached to see if this is going to work for your application. Now, while we're talking about dimensions, let me actually show you. This is actually interesting that when you actually add the rack attach, it actually does push back all of your gear farther away from the vehicle. So actually, this is a fair bit of space right here. So I can actually easily access the ladder without even needing to swing the hitch away. Um, although you're not able to open the doors all the way, right? So you see, we still have interference. So it's still definitely a good idea of having the rack attach to be able to swing out of the way completely so that you can have access to the rear uh, in a completely unobstructed way. Um, while we're looking at this, since we talked about it moving back farther, should also mention it does extend the length of your 
entire rig by, you know, a non-trivial amount. In fact, for me, um, I live in an I need to ride on ferry boats quite often and the ferry you have to have your entire rig from bumper to the uh, whatever is the farthest rear point of your vehicle be under a certain dimension in fact it's 22 feet um, in order to pay normal fares so there's been actually a couple of cases because with the rack attached and the bike rack like this I actually am over that measurement that dimension of 22 feet by uh, I believe around 10 or 11 inches so uh, the nice thing about this setup the way I have it if you are Remember, this bike rack is actually foldable. So there was actually one or two times where I got to the ferry line and the they actually wanted to measure me and they measured it and they saw that I was a little bit longer and they said, oh, you're gonna have to pay a little bit extra. Actually, it's, it's not a little, it's actually a fair bit of extra overage for the extra length. Well, the nice thing about this is what I did, I said, you know what, hang on just a second. I jumped out of the car, quickly unhitched both of these bikes, threw them up on the roof temporarily, folded up the bike rack and then the rack attached with the fold a bike rack actually is less than 22 feet and now suddenly I become a normal car and I can ride the ferry and pay a normal fare so that was uh, was pretty awesome so I've had some pretty heavy loads on the rack attached and it seemed to have no issues so here's an example with a 75 pound rad wagon bike a 35 pound mountain bike and a 65 pound bike rack so this is about 175 pounds of stuff um, the published load limit for the rack attach is about 275 pounds um, and I guess while we're talking about weight, in case you're interested, I weighed it and the large version of the rack attach is about 51 pounds. Now the website claims that it's 43 pounds, but I think this is probably for the small version of the rack attach. All right, so there you have it. This is the Rack Attach Swing Away Hitch Arm. So I've had it for about a year now, and I've taken this on bike trips, ski trips, uh, camping trips, and even just quick jaunts down to the park, and it's worked out great so far. It's super helpful that when you're on a road trip and you make a pit stop and you want to get something out of the back, it's just so easy to simply unlatch this and then swing this entire rack out of the way and then get whatever you need from the back and then just be on your way. So uh, it's great in that respect. Now, that's not to say it's been all unicorn and butterflies. As we saw, they've made some improvements to design, but it wasn't exactly, it's not, it's not perfect, right? It would have been nice if this bottom bar was just, you know, a half inch to an inch shorter than the top bar. That way we could still use a normal standard hitch anti-rattle mechanism um, on the connection between the rack attach and the uh, whatever you're plugging into it. Um, we also saw that the, the vertical clearance left something to be desired, uh, at least on my configuration with my van. It has a potential to scrape the ground in a couple of different scenarios. Um, and I wish it didn't really extend the length of the rig so much. So we saw that in this case, it extends it by about 11 inches. Um, also, the other thing to notice, and maybe this is easy to see the way I've got it right now, when you have this in the swung out configuration, you kind of block the parking spot next to you. So if you stop for lunch in a parking lot and you swing this out of the way, you can't really just leave it there because then you're either going to be boxing in the guy that's sitting uh, right next to you or you're taking up that entire parking spot. So uh, just a couple of minor nitpicky things because otherwise um, I've been very, very happy with it and it's been working great and I am looking forward to using it for a lot more adventures in the future. So with that being said, uh, I think this is a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video and if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. Also, uh, please leave me a comment and let me know if the video was helpful or if there are other topics you'd like me to consider covering in the future. And speaking of the future, remember the new videos come out every Monday, so I I hope you'll join me then and we can all learn something new together. So until I see you at another video, I think I'll sign off for now. Bye.